the new God of humanity. For everyone who knows Jesus and lives his teachings, God is very well defined as the creator of heaven and earth, the heavenly Father, whose only way to reach him is Jesus. God is God of gods, light of lights, spirit of spirits. God is not man, because men are God's creatures, and God is uncreated. However, Jesus is God because being God, he became incarnate in the immaculate womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary to offer his life for all mankind. Thus Jesus is true God and true man, spirit of the word of God who created the heavens and the earth, word of the eternal life who saves us. Jesus is the savior of the world through his sacrifice on the cross, really present in the sacraments of the church and in a personal way for each one of us in the sacrament of the Holy Eucharist. For this reason, there is not and there will not be any man or angel who can be like God. So why am I talking about a new God? Let me explain. God created man in his image and likeness, Genesis chapter 1, verse 26. He made him immortal and eternal with his own will, and God placed him in paradise as the head of all creation. The only thing that God required of man was to keep his commandments, and he warned him that if he did not obey, he would certainly die, Genesis chapter 2, verse 17. But because of man's disobedience, aided by the demon's lie, man sinned, and as a consequence, death arose, accompanied by the suffering that is due to all human beings. Let us see clearly that it was not God who created suffering, but man, with his disobedience, so God destroyed his immortality, Genesis chapter 3, verse 19, and condemned him to return to the dust from which he had been created. The world became a place of suffering, and all this is summed up in God's will, that in his love for the creature, he provides him with a form of purification that helps him to restore his friendship with him. Jeremiah chapter 30, verse 15. Why do you complain about your brokenness? Your suffering is irremediable because of your great guilt and your sins. I have done this to you. Jesus has come to share his suffering with us so that through his crucifixion, agony and death, we may purify our souls with his body and blood in the sacrament of his presence. John chapter 6 verse 55. A man considers himself more intelligent than God, even though he does not manifest it verbally. He simply creates in his mind a God in his own image and likeness. That is, he creates a God in his own way that justifies him and also allows him to save himself, but without the need for obedience and suffering. Man idealizes an easy world where God is placed in an inferior place, where God is still exists, but is not the one to be worshipped. In reality, man begins to form himself as if he were a God and begins to worship himself. To be God is not to have to obey any other God. It is to seek what we want and not what God wants. It is to seek the easy life that somehow exalts us and puts us above others and also about God. When we are born, everything is planned. We have to educate ourselves, prepare ourselves to excel. We have to fight to overcome the difficulties of life. We have to succeed economically, but we have to stand out from the crowd and succeed. Life presents us with a number of goals in imitation of others who are better than us. And all this makes us idealize something that in many cases will not come. For those who are born in the midst of their parents' wealth, everything is there to help them achieve their goals. For the poor, life is a nightmare that makes them suffer. Very few manage to stand out 
and get what they need, and even less what they want. And how can one be happy in the midst of such much ambition? How can we find peace when our peace depends on our strength and not on God? Do we forget that Jesus said in Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, Seek first the kingdom of heaven and God's righteousness, and all of the things will be given to you as well. Poverty is a virtue that accompanied Jesus and all his followers. No wonder he said in Mark chapter 10, verse 25, It is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich man to enter the kingdom of God. Poverty is not only of uneconomic nature, but also in a spiritual way. Ambition is driven by pride. Pride is going against God's will. On the other hand, humility before God is spiritual poverty. Matthew chapter 5, verse 3, God said to man, You will learn your bread by the sweat of your brow. Genesis chapter 3, verse 19, He did not offer to make a living easily. He who cares more about money than about God opens his heart to ambition and lets money reign within him as a false god. Luke chapter 16, verse 13. This ambition for wealth, education, power, human brotherhood, recognition, human rights, and freedom from suffering is precisely a way of going against God, who has disposed of life accompanied by struggle. That kind of promised society where hunger will not exist, where each one can do what is most favorable to him, including sin, gender, ideology, abortion, since we are not the owners of our bodies, homosexuality, the forced education of children where they are taught in morality, divorce, since for the laws of the earth, marriage is not a union between man, woman, and God, forever. Furthermore, they already considered marriage to be the union between two people of the same sex, contradicting the law of God. Freemasonry has promoted its three poisonous currents of freedom, equality and fraternity, which have affected society and religions. Freedom has led man to seek all his human rights and leads him to deny the divine rights, that is, the commandments of God. Religions already accept divorce, homosexuality, and anything. After all, it is proclaimed. Who am I to judge? Equality has led to the desire to create a society without poverty, which is a fantasy a proclamation of social justice that will never be realized, a gospel of peace and false hope, sermons of illusionism in things that will never come, in the equality promoted by Freemasonry. Women with their feminism will already equal to men. In claiming gender equality has destroyed home life and marriages, many men have lost their virility and want to be homosexuals. The minds of children are perverted to create confusion. Another principle of Freemasonry is human brotherhood, or humanism, which leads to an illusion of making us all brothers without distinction between God's people and the pagans, which is not brotherhood in the blood of Christ, but brotherhood in the poison of Satan. All this contributes to the exaltation of the human being, to the contempt of the divine laws, to the contempt of the salvation that Christ offers us in his only church. And if we unite this to the ecumenism proposed by the church, we will no longer need a savior, because in ecumenism all religions alone give salvation. Where is Christ in all this? Where is the teaching of our traditional church, which is already disintegrating? Which God is the one we are looking for? Or which God is trying to teach us? This God, being taught by the world, is the very Antichrist, of whom the Holy Scriptures warn us. 
we are living in the time where man has created his own God. This God is man himself, who is exalted in his pride, claiming the place of God. This God is the same Satan, not the God that our fathers and the church taught us with their faithful magisterium. Let us remember that we are prone to worship a new God into whose claws we will easily fall if we continue to feed on doctrines of humanism, ecumenism, abundance, peace, and prosperity. The new God will justify us from sins against the Ten Commandments, and it's already happening. He will take away our true love for God so that we can share it among men. And of course, this new God will discredit Christ and his blessed mother. My dear brother, sister, let us be very careful with the new teachings that are heard from high places. Let us use discernment. Let us return to the only true God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Let us come with confidence to Jesus, the only way to God the Father the one who suffered for our sins and rose again to grant us his salvation. The divine providence is given us signs of the coming of Christ in his glory. It is time to prepare ourselves with repentance and conversion so that we can worthily meet the Lord. God bless you. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like, subscribe to our channel, Share this message and leave your comments. God bless you.